Hi everyone, my name is Don. I'm a first year surgical resident. Today we're going to be going over what I think med students should know about sutures and needles. So when I was a med student on surgical rotations, staff surgeons loved to pimp about uh, pros and cons of the different suture types. So hopefully after this video, you'll have a better understanding of the different suture materials as well as be able to answer commonly pimped questions about pros and cons of sutures. So let's jump into it. Concerning needles, there are three types that you should be aware about, which are tapered, conventional cutting, and reverse cutting. Tapered needles are represented on the package with a circle and a dot inside it. Tapered needles are the ones you're probably used to seeing on a sewing needle or a safety pin. They're really just round and have a pointy end. Tapered needles are very common for large sutures and are uh, general purpose needles uh, for the body. Conventional cutting needles are represented on the package with a triangle with the tip facing upwards. This indicates that the cutting edge is in, inside of the curve of the needle. As you can see, the conventional cutting needles outside is very flat and the inside has that little edge that helps go through tissues more easily. Reverse cutting needles are actually far more common than conventional cutting needles. They're represented on the package by a triangle with a tip facing downwards. This indicates that the edge is on the outside of the needle's curve. As you can see, the outside has this edge that helps, just like the conventional cutting needle, to go through tissues more easily. Commonly, we will use this for closures of the skin. You can see on the inside that it is flat unlike the conventional cutting. One thing to note about cutting needles is that they're better than tapered needles to go through tissue, but the actual edge of the needle itself is not sharp and doesn't cut your skin easily. So you shouldn't be scared of touching the needle even though you shouldn't uh, actually be handling the needles with your fingers. As you can see, touching it with my finger reveals that it is quite a blunt edge. The main types of curves of needles you will see are the half circle and the three eighths of a circle. Moving on to sutures. There are many ways to classify the sutures following their different characteristics, but I found that it was quite uh, confusing at first, especially when we're presented with these large tables that have every characteristic of every suture, and there's no real way to um, categorize it in our minds. So here's a practical way of categorizing sutures with their characteristics that is relevant to real life, as well as common things that you might be pimped on during your rotation. Sizing is counterintuitive, they range from 10-0 to size 7. And 7 is the largest, and 10-0 will be the smallest. And so you go from 10-0, 9-0, 8-0, and you're, as you're going down like that, the sutures are actually getting bigger. Common ones you will hear are from the range of 4-0 to uh, 0 or 1 type suture. So the first way of distinguishing sutures is absorbable versus non-absorbable sutures. In general, inside the body, we're going to use absorbable sutures unless we're dealing with uh, tissues with very high tensile strength, such as tendon repairs. As well, skin lacerations in the emergency room will be repaired with interrupted non-absorbable sutures because we have the intention of removing them at a later time. Absorbable sutures can last anywhere from seven days up to a few hundred days. It's not necessary to know which is what, but you do have to know that they do lose tensile strength quite fast. Though it isn't necessary, if you do want to learn which sutures are absorbable and non-absorbable, it's easier to remember the ones that are non-absorbable. Though these ones are silk, nylon, and polypropylene. So nylon sutures are gonna be the ones that end in lawn, so uh, things such as ethylon, um, surgilon, will be nylon uh, and thus be non-absorbable. For, for polypropylene, the common one we see is proline, so anything ending in lean uh, will be also non-absorbable. The last one is obvious, it is uh, surgical steel that we use to close up sternotomies. Uh, that obviously is not absorbed into the body. So generally, those are the ones you're going to see that are non-absorbable and you can safely guess that the other ones are going to be absorbable sutures. 
The next way of distinguishing sutures is by the material, which can either be synthetic or natural. What you need to know about the pros and cons of natural and synthetic is that natural sutures will cause increased tissue reaction and thus more inflammation and possibly more infection when used inside the body. That is the main point uh, that you should know. So the natural ones are quite easy to remember. The first one is cat gut or plain gut. And this is actually made of cow or sheep intestine. The other natural suture is silk, which is made of the silkworm and that you will also commonly use in the hospital. The third big category of sutures is monofilament versus polyfilament. This is a concept that is very frequently pimped in the OR and that surgeons love to ask med students about. Monofilament, as the name suggests, is made of a single strand of material. Because of this, the outer layer of the suture is smoother and thus causes less tissue trauma as well as less areas for bacteria to nest and cause infection. Polyfilament, on the other hand, is made of twisted or braided strands of the material. Because of this, polyfilament sutures are generally stronger and have more friction and thus create stronger knots. The main cons of polyfilament sutures are that the outer layer is quite rough and that can cause some tissue trauma and the braided structure can make it more prone to bacteria. This means that polyfilament sutures do cause more wound infections. Polyfilaments can be braided or twisted, but that is not something very important. Another aspect of comparing mono to polyfilament sutures is what we call memory. Memory is a tendency for the suture to return to its original position and make it harder to uh, tie knots. As I'm demonstrating here, you can see that pulling on this nylon string uh, will make it quickly come back into its original position, thus making it harder to handle. This can be a mild issue when tying knots because the knots will not lay as flat as you'd like and if you, could, if you pull hard enough, you could undo some of the knots. On the other hand, here I'm showing that polyfilaments generally have a lot less memory and you can pull them straight, which means that you can easily handle them and tie knots that are going to be flat, secure, and not as prone to slipping. You can easily tell by handling the sutures which are polyfilament and which are monofilament, so it's not important to know which is which. The common polyfilaments that I've encountered clinically are the natural ones, so silk and gut, as well as vicryl and polysorb, or anything ending in zorb. Those ones are polyfilaments, and the rest, you can safely guess, are monofilaments. But again, there's no way of knowing unless you learn each of them individually. So each suture pack has all of the information we discussed on the package, but I hope this video was helpful to understand the differences and the pros and cons of each element of the suture. Here's a summary of what we covered. Just like anything in medicine, you might have to learn and relearn what we discussed in this video. But the best way you're gonna remember is by seeing it clinically and by seeing what is used and not used in your hospital. If you found this video helpful at all, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.